In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how you can smooth the motion of elements that you move with keyframes on the position value by using Ease In and Ease Out. We're going to show you the difference between applying and not applying these parameters to anything that you can move with keyframes. So we have on the screen a video and we have an icon. Let's pretend that it's perhaps a logo and we want to move it from one part of the screen to another. Normally we'd move it on the screen from off the screen, but we're going to start with it on the screen so you can see the difference. So let's play this and you're going to see the normal icon move from the upper left to the upper right. Now that's the typical motion without these ease in and ease out elements applied. I also have some other icons we're going to use that illustrate how each of them work. I'm going to turn on the ease in. I'm going to see that available as well. Now when we start, we'll see that they both have the normal parameters. They move together at the same speed in the same way. Let's see what happens when we actually use ease in on the second element. So we're going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to double click on my ease in object and get into the PIP designer. Now I notice that I have only two keyframes. You could use multiple ones with these particular parameters, but we're only going to use two. So I have one to start with, and then if I move to the next one, I'm in three seconds and 15 frames, and I have the second. So what I want to do on this one is I want to change this. Now you notice if I move back to the first keyframe by clicking on the triangle on the position value, I have Ease Out active and Ease In grayed out. Why is that? Well, the Ease Out will only work if there is a keyframe to the left of it. The Ease In will only work if there's one or more keyframes to the right of it. Now, I find the name of these a little bit counterintuitive because Ease In isn't the where you start. You apply that where you end. It is easing into the new location. Ease out is, is out of the old location. But we're going to start with ease in. So if, if we move to the end, we're going to see we're at the end of this and we'll do the ease in. See ease out again is grayed. I don't have a keyframe after it, so I only have ease in and we'll apply that to my second keyframe. So when the second object moves, it will ease into position at the very end. So I'm going to click on OK. And let's see the difference in the motion as we look on the screen. We play it this way and ease in moves faster, but then it slows down and kind of softens at the end. Let's try this again. It moves faster and then it slows down. They all both get to the same place at the same moment in time, but it softens the end. It's faster in the beginning. It's actually a little more natural movement when you look at it this way. So it moves fast and then kind of softens at the end to slow down. Let's see what the ease out does. I'm going to activate that particular graphic that I have now. And now we have three. Ease out is starting out normal. So if I play them all together, you'll see the ease in is different. But again, they arrive at the same place at the end at that keyframe at three seconds and 15 frames. Let's click on ease out. Double click. Again, out is where you begin, not where you end. We'll get into the PIP Designer. And we're going to take the first keyframe, not the last keyframe. And I can do the Ease Out option under my position value and object settings. I'll click on that. Click on OK. Now we're going to see the difference between that and the two above it. Let's play that. So Ease Out starts slower. It's a softer launch, if you will. Let's play it again. You see the ease out moves slower and then it arrives at the same location at the end as normal. The third option you have is to apply both of these. And so we're going to take the ease in and out and turn that one on. And in this case, we're going to activate both the in and the out. We'll get to our PIP designer by double clicking. And we're going to go to the first keyframe and do an ease out. We'll move with our arrow to the second keyframe. We'll do an ease in and click on OK. 
So now we'll see the difference between using both of those parameters as opposed to one or the other. Let's play this and you'll see what happens. Soft launch on the bottom one and smooth at the end. We'll play it again. It's a little subtle, but you can see the difference. One more time. So that's a way in which you can use the ease in and ease out on any object. So I'm going to move to a different track where I actually have a phone number or part of a phone number. And let's assume we want to do that here. Let's start at the beginning. We'll set a position keyframe. And the phone number we want to start out here. And in this case, let's take another position. Let's go in two set seconds more. And we'll set a keyframe. And let's say we want it over here. When we're looking at our values, we have ease in and ease out. This is a title, but we'll use an ease in. And let's see what this looks like when we start this. Ease in again is at the end, and so it softens as it lands. Now normally we do something like this off the screen. So what I'm going to do is minimize this a little bit so we can see more real estate. We're going to start it off screen, maybe over here. And then when we play this, it slides into a soft landing. So that's what the ease in does. I like the ease in. I will use that a lot more than perhaps ease out normally, but it's nice to have either text or objects or anything that you can keyframe by position to have a nice smooth and fluid motion by using ease in or ease out.